Hey guys, I'm getting ready to make the New York style cheesecake. And I just wanted to show you all just a few things that I do. Um, uh, I know I, I know I showed this on my other page, but I don't remember if I've showed it on this page or not. So I'm just going to tell you what I do. And if you already do this, great. Uh, the first thing I do is I, the way that I warm up my cream cheese and get it soft is I put it in a big bowl of hot water out of my faucet. I get it as hot as it'll get. Then I put my four things of cream cheese in here. And uh, now if you want a thicker New York che style cheesecake, a 10 inch, you want to add five. I'm just doing four today because uh, sometimes uh, it depends on what you're putting on for a topping and stuff and how you're making it. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm making a 10 inch cheesecake today. Uh, I also make a eight inch cheesecake a lot of times, you know, an eight inch is a big cheesecake. 10 inch is really big. It'll feed a big family. But put your cream cheese in hot water out of your faucet as hot as it'll get and let it sit for about 20 to 25 minutes. And it just does a perfect job of warming up that cream cheese. Another thing that I wanted to show you is uh, with your pan. A lot of times people, most people put the lip up where it's got this little lip on top down like this. Down like this. I turn it over this way. Because here, you, the lips down here, and here it just slides like this. Your cheesecake, you can get a spatula under it and just, or, or your fingers under it and just slide it right out that way. And your pan goes right in perfect like that. It doesn't, uh, doesn't keep it from going in. I always push it down on the edges to make sure it's in there good. Because you're always going to put a piece of aluminum foil. And that's what I did. I cut off just a piece of aluminum foil and put it under the pan, under this pan. And um, I'm gonna mess it up now. <laughs> See if I can get it back in, okay. And then I just press it up around the edges. Long as you've got it about an inch up like this, this is to catch any excess butter that comes out of that crust while you're, while you're baking it and while you're baking the cheesecake. And if you don't put this on here, you better make sure you've got aluminum foil in the bottom of your thing, because sometimes, you know, this will drip down in there. And I just go around the bottom, take my hand, and push around the rim, you know, to make sure that aluminum foil is adhering to it good. Now, I'm going to set this right here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start making my graham cracker crust. And I've got uh, Kroger graham crackers. You don't have to choose the most expensive graham crackers. Uh, usually I do a chocolate graham cracker crust on this, but you can't find the graham cracker crumbs right now. So this one's gonna have to have just regular graham cracker crust. And I take a bowl and it takes two, cu uh, two cups, two cups of graham cracker crumbs. Let me get my, my little measuring cup out here. Let me see if I can get you all, whoops position to where you can see just a little bit better and I'll scoot back a little bit. Um, we need two cups of graham cracker cones. Boop. Well, heck, <laughs> I've only got just a tad bit left there, maybe a teaspoon, so I put it in. Now, and you need a stick of melted butter. And you want to use um, unsalted butter if you've got it. If you don't, then I don't think salted butter is going to make that much of a difference. But I'm just used to using the non-salted because I try to keep down the salt any way I can. Unless I'm going to put the butter in like a cake. And then I kind of adjust the salt I put in it. But let me warm up this butter, melt this butter, and I'll be right back. And you need three tablespoons of sugar in this. Three tablespoons of just regular white sugar. When I get the butter melted, I'll be right back. Okay, now I've got my butter melted and I've got three tablespoons of sugar. This little container has the tablespoons marked on it. I keep this in my sugar. I've got several of these little things. These are just good, um, I'll show you. I've got like four, three of them sitting in my cupboard. These are the handiest little containers to put in your, anything that you're, you know, you get out in small quantities because you can measure out a cup real easy with that. Uh, you just put, 
it's got it goes up to a quarter cup when you get up here to the top mark it's a quarter cup so if you put four of those in it's a cup you know so um i've got three tablespoons of sugar let me get my sugar sitting back over here and then I just take my spoon and kind of stir this around and get it mixed up a little bit. So when I put the butter in, it's not going to, you know, just uh, kind of melt and ooze together. Now I'm going to put my stick of butter in there. I usually just put all my dishes over in the sink and do them all together when I get done. Now we're going to stir this up, and you want it crumbly, like kind of like wet sand. If you've ever made a graham cracker crust, you know what I'm talking about. You just want to make sure it's mixed up good. And it doesn't take too long to do this. It just uh, sometimes I use a fork to do this. It seems like sometimes it works better, but most of the time, though, it mixes right up. It's not hard. Okay, now I got my pan. I'll probably have to push that back up a little bit. Sometimes I mess it around trying to... And you just pour all this in your pan. And you want to try to get this even, you know, level. Because that's going to determine how your cheesecake, you know... Now, some people will press it way up the sides. I don't do that much because, uh, you know, that's more, I think, for looks. Uh, I just try to make it go up a little bit. It's much more likely to crumble off and break if you do that. So that's one reason I don't do it. I just kind of take my spoon and try to level this out as best I can, you know, and, and not have any high places in it. Now, what I do here, uh, a lot of people may not want to do, if you don't want to do it this way, you can use... Uh, uh, you can use a little measuring cup like this and press around if you want to. But that's harder on me. I take the back side of my hand like this, just like your patent biscuits, and I press it down around the edges first. I press in the corner and around the edges. And I can tell more this way whether or not it's getting pressed down good, you know. And then I press down right in the center. I just press all of it down in the middle. And then kind of go back around. Just make sure you've got it all pressed in good. You don't have any loose crumbs. Now, you can see that that, that worked just fine. You've got it going up the edge just a little bit. And it's fine. Now... I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in there for seven or eight minutes, okay? You don't wanna leave it in there too long. Then get it out and let it, let that be cooling before you even start that cheesecake batter. Cause you can't pour hot or batter on this hot crust. It has to be just, it can be a little warm, but you don't want a hot crust straight out of the oven. So you do this first. Put this in your oven, leave it in there for about seven or eight minutes, take it out, set it over there, or set it on your cooling rack, whatever you're gonna do, and then start you know, putting the cheesecake batter together. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Uh, let, I'm gonna pause you for just a second. Okay, guys, <clears throat> I have taken my uh, I have taken it out of the oven and I'm sitting it over here on the wire rack to cool. And while that is cooling, I'm gonna start putting the cheesecake batter together. The first thing we're gonna do, let's see, let me get my recipe book out of the way. I don't wanna get it nasty. I've got, en <laughs> I've got enough stuff on it already. Okay, now, let me show you something. These, uh, let me get my, Get my dish towel over here. I always have to have a dish towel right here for this. And I just lay it down and kind of wipe it off a little bit. And I take my scissors. If I've got my scissors in here, I may still have them. Oh, there they are. Robert put them back up for me. Um, I just 
uh, well, shoot, I cut the end of that off. I just cut it off. Then I take it right like this. And you can see how that cream cheese just slides right out there. It's just, it's soft. And it mixes up so good this way. Uh, you don't have any lumps. Your batter will be just as smooth as silk. I see people put it in there and it's not good and, uh, uh, you know, good and warm. Or it's soft. And it just does not work good at all. They have big lumps in their cheesecakes. And um, I just, I like doing it this way. See, I just press this down. I squeeze the cream cheese down just a little bit. And then I just cut right across the top like that. Then squeeze it out. And it's so easy this way. Just It's just easy. <laughs> You're not having to, you know... Try so hard to get it soft or get it out of the paint, uh, the containers because it just squeezes right out this way right here. And the first thing I do once I get everything in there is I put my sour cream in with it. Sour cream and my flour. This is the thing. A lot of times it's the steps that you do. Uh, let me see if I can get you back just a little bit. My... Okay, that's not, I know that's not the best. I, I, my lighting in here is just not good. And uh, just the way it is. But we need a cup of sour cream. And I have got almost a cup in this container. Now, you measure it. If you can't eyeball it like I do, then you measure, okay? But I kind of know what a cup is. And I had maybe just a, a, not hardly a cup in that. So I'm going to add another pretty good sized tablespoon to it. And that should be about a cup. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put three tablespoons of flour in this. And it, it can be plain or self-rising, either one. Neither one of them hurts. And if you don't have flour, you can use cornstarch. Personally, I like flour better. Flour does a much better job. Now, usually, what I do here is I will, I will sift this through my little sifter because I don't want it to clump. What I do is I take a heaping teaspoon. That makes about, um, that's about a tablespoon. And then I kind of, Sift it around here. Let's see. Well, now, my recipe right here, I said three. It's two tablespoons. Sorry, guys. I'm thinking of making the five thing. So I'm going to make this a little less than probably what I would. I'm going to leave about a tablespoon in it. About like that. I'm going to put that back in my container. And set this over here. Now, I'm gonna mix these up by themselves. You don't wanna put your eggs in right now. You just wanna mix this up and get that flour incorporated into everything before you put anything else in there with it. Okay, now, I'm gonna take my spatula. Because I use this stand mixer, I always push down the sides to make sure that everything is getting incorporated good, you know. Uh, this stand mixer, Robert got me this for Christmas one year, and I am so thankful for it. But at times, you know, you have to learn how to use these things, and you have to learn the weak points just as well as the good points. And one of the weak points is you have to scrape the sides down, just like you would with any other mixer. Now I'm going to put my vanilla in. And this is the way I do it. For every two packs of cream cheese, I put a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay? <laughs> so I use two teaspoons of vanilla in this. Now let me mix this up. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is put a cup and a half of sugar in it. 
And you could have put your sugar in with the sour cream and the um, cream cheese you want to. Okay, this is a quarter cup. Quarter cup. I'm getting a measuring out a cup here. Now that's a cup. Four of these is a cup. So I need two more to make. And I'm just gonna put about that much because I've been getting them a little bit more. <laughs> but you need a cup and a half of sugar. And if you don't, uh, um, if yours is, uh, you know, you don't have these, then just measure with a cup and a half, you know. Now, let's mix it up again. You have to kind of start this a little slow because that sugar will. Now, I'm gonna take my spatula and press this back down. You don't wanna beat this too much. You know, you wanna to try to get things incorporated pretty quick. You, you beat it just enough to get it mixed you know, to incorporate what you're putting in. Because if you beat it too much, you get a lot of air in it. Okay, now, this is a good rule to remember. For every pack of cream cheese, you want one egg. So I've got four packs of cream cheese, and that's a large egg. We're gonna put four large eggs in it. Let me get it going here, guys. There's one. Put two of them in and mix it just a little bit. Just a little bit. It won't even really you can still see the yellow on top. And then put the other two in. Okay, let me put these over here in my bowl. I've been saving eggs for my friend. She puts them in the, the shells. She puts them in her garden. They, they built them a little greenhouse last year and they put them in their garden. Okay, now. Let me stir this a little bit with my spatula because I can see around the edges it's not wanting to Mix up good yet. Now, whoop, put it right there. So I turn it up and I beat it for just pretty good to get everything mixed up good. Okay, now, now it's ready to pour into the Cheesecake pan. Now this is a plain cheesecake. When you're gonna dress it on top, you want a plain cheesecake. Now there's cheesecakes you can put in the batter if you wanna change the, the batter. Let me put my water over here, guys. Okay, now, let me get my pan. And I always check it. It's a little, it's just like lukewarm. And that's fine, that's fine. Now, we'll take our batter off here. And I'm just gonna kinda stir it up a little bit. I'm just gonna fold and look and see how many bubbles are in it. Not too many. Now, we're gonna pour it into our cheesecake pan. And this is called a spring form pan. If you've never used a springform pan, I'm sure a lot of the cooks on here have, but it's just for people that haven't used one. You bake a cheesecake in a springform pan. Now right down in the very bottom of that, there's a little bit of not mixed up good. So I'm mixing it. Okay, 
Okay. Now, what I do now is I just kind of spread it around like this. Just jiggle it around. It's kind of going to move, you know, and level out. Okay, now, this dish towel will go in the, in the <laughs> dirty clothes pile today. I keep a container sitting in my uh, laundry area there that I put all my dirty dish towels in. I wash my dish towels together. I don't wash them with anything else. Okay, now, what you need to do now is we need to peck this like this. You pick it up or just kind of tap the side of it, you know. You just want to pick it up enough. Then turn it. This is to get the air bubbles out. The more of those air bubbles you get out from the inside of the cheesecake, the better it's going to be. But you don't want to beat it hard now. You're just tapping it. And you'll see the little air bubbles come to the top. Now, that helps to keep it from cracking. Does that mean it won't crack? You never know. <laughs> Sometimes you put them in there. Some people like to use uh, hot water baths under them. I've never done that. I've never used hot water bath, but one time and it messed it up. So I don't like them. <laughs> uh, my cheesecakes always turn out good most of the time. And even if they crack, guys, if you're putting a topping on them, you can, and after you get them out, if there is a crack, all you have to do is soften you up just a little bit of cream cheese, soften enough you can spread it and spread it in your crack and, and put it in the refrigerator and let it sit like that because you're going to let it cure for at least 24 hours. It's better if you can let it cure two days. Leave it in the refrigerator two days before you eat it or do anything to it. Okay? And uh, But right now we're going to put this in the oven. And let's see, how long have I got on here that you bake this? I bake it on 350 degrees for about 30 minutes, and then I turn it down to 325 or 330, and then I let it finish baking. And what you want to do is you want to look, and the, the cheesecake is going to be a little jiggly. When you touch it, it's going to kind of jiggle, but it's going to have like a little film over the top, you know. You, it's not wet, okay? And you want to touch the very center just a little bit. If it's still wet in the center, it's not done, okay? You want it jiggly, but some a lot of times people overbake cheesecake. That's why they're not good. Or they underbake them and they're runny. You don't want to do that. It's it's a little bit of art learning how to do this. Okay, I'll let it sit there for just a second. Then I pack a few more little air bubbles out of it. Now I'm going to put it in the oven. And I'll turn you right like this, and you can watch me put it in the oven. Now, I set my timer for 30 minutes. Oop, went too far. Start. So now it's started. And then when it beeps, I'll come back in here. I'll turn it down to 325, 330. And then I'll bake it for about another 30 to 35 minutes. It takes about an hour to make a cheesecake. If you don't use five, if you haven't got five stacks of cream cheese in it, you can, it usually takes a little less. But um, I'll try to show you what I'm talking about, the jiggly look when it gets to it. But I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, guys. I just took the cheesecake out of the oven, and even though I put aluminum foil around mine, butter still dripped out down in the center of my oven. <laughs> and uh, I noticed I got to smelling that smell, and I come in here, but I've got it on aluminum foil in the bottom, so uh, I don't, unless I tore my aluminum foil, I don't know what I did. I may have made a little hole in it, taking it off and putting it back on. But I'm gonna let you see the cheesecake. Now, if you look, see how it starts getting these little cracks around the edge? That's usually an indicator that it's done. But if you look here, I can run my hand over that whole cheesecake, and there's nothing on my hand. 
But now right here in the center, see how it's jiggly? Let me kind of move it here just a little bit. See how it jiggles? When it, can you see that movement? Now, you almost think it's not done, but when you press on it, it just kind of is bouncy. See how it's just bouncy? Now, what I'm going to do is in a few minutes, I'm going to take this aluminum foil off. You know, when it kind of cools down a little bit, I'll, in about 30 or 40 minutes, maybe an hour, you want to take a knife and you want to go around the edge of this to loosen it. But you got to let it cool for about an hour before you do that. But you want to do it because if you let it sit too long, it will adhere to this pan. It will stick to it. And it's a lot harder to get it off later. And you just take your knife, uh, a paring knife like this, and you put it right against the metal, and you just go right around the edge, all the way around the edge. You want to push it down till, you, till about, about where the crust is at, and you want to go all the way around it. So you just kind of, on the inside, you want to get your knife about like that and just go all the way around it. Then... You're going to let it cool for at least four to five hours. You want this cool. You want it just lukewarm before you ever put it in the refrigerator. That's why if you're going to make a cheesecake, you better make it early in the day, about 12 or 1 o'clock, because <laughs> you've got to give it four or five hours to cool. And then uh, <clears throat> once it starts cooling, you know, you've got it cooled and you loosen it from the pan, just let it go. Let it sit there. And then, when it's completely cool, put you a piece of aluminum foil over the top of it and just leave it in the pan and put it in the refrigerator. And uh, you want to leave it for at least 24 hours, okay? And uh, these little cracks here, see how these little... Cr um, let me turn you back around. These little cracks here, sometimes they'll crack in here if you cook them too long. You can see where that one was trying to start. When it gets completely cool... And you're going to put this in the refrigerator. Don't do it when it's still warm. But when it's completely cool, take you with some cream cheese. Get you about, I don't know, about a, I don't know, fourth of a block. Just, you know, a little bit off of the end. Warm it up just enough you can spread it. Get it make sure You can do it in the microwave. But just don't get it bubbly hot, though. You know, make sure it's cool enough when you spread it. But you want it soft enough you can spread it. Then just spread it in your little cracks and put it in the refrigerator and let it get back firm and it'll firm right up and it'll be fine. It won't hurt it if you if you don't want those little cracks to be seen. But a lot of times, like if I'm putting strawberries or cherries or blueberries or something on top of it, it doesn't matter. It won't hurt it. That's that's going to be hidden anyway. And uh, and you can look here. These cracks are smaller as it cools. You can already see how, how small these cracks here, because they will kind of close back up. They will close up, and it won't hurt anything. So, <clears throat> I hope you all try to make you a cheesecake, and don't be too uh, threatened with it. Uh, but I can tell right now, I'm going to have to get me a new piece of aluminum foil. Oh, that stinks. I've got my ceiling fan on, got the door open. <laughs> I can't stand that smell. You know, anything burning like that, it just it chokes me. I don't like it. But anyway, I'm going to get off of here, and I'm going to find me something to eat for lunch. I haven't eaten any breakfast. I'm on. Robert fusses at me because I eat cheese and crackers so much. <laughs> he, he says, is that all you eat is cheese and crackers? I said, well, that's all I wanted. You know, I wouldn't. I eat cheese and crackers and little cherry tomatoes. <laughs> But anyway, I'm trying to stay away from very much salt, you know. And if, if you don't eat a whole lot, you can't eat a whole lot of salt. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Love you guys. Bye.